Hello and welcome, today I'm in the tier 10 Japanese battleship the Yamato and I'm using these modules and commander skills. Now this is a match on the map Hotspot and if you've played recently you would have noticed that the spawns on Hotspot are different now. You see I spawned in the middle right here which puts me rather close to the enemy team and I don't really like this because the closest ships can spawn 21 kilometers from one another, so imagine if one side has an Izumo and the other side is a destroyer. The Izumo without any concealment has 19 concealment improvements, has 19.3 kilometer concealment range. That means that DD will spot her within like 30-40 seconds. No, sorry, 20-30 seconds. 20 to 30 seconds from the start of the game. And the other thing is that Carriers also seem to spawn closer than expected and which is why we can right now shoot that Lexington. Now as a Yamato I often still had the ability to shoot an enemy carrier because of her massive range however other tier 10 battleships could have fired at the Lexington here as well. Now, I don't really expect much from it but it could still ruin a game very easily and I don't like that. And you want to have an early period of time where the teams can decide on what to do and you know try to maneuver around it and I feel that um, this map kind of takes it away especially if uh, if you even have people that don't load into the match immediately okay so I guess we're going towards the A side and I'm literally sailing away but I did get a nice shot on this uh, Zao like looks like a broadside oh okay I'll take that. Uh, Zhao, are you having fun yet? Because that was some really fun and engaging gameplay mechanics. So, yeah, I guess the first ship to fall was a tier 10 cruiser to one shell, essentially. Well, actually, it's like two, though. Okay, so I guess our team is... I guess we're not actually fighting for the A-cap. We are simply sailing near the A-side. I don't really know what the team is doing. And um, unfortunately with the way the spawns are, like look my division mate still has not connected to the game. I've, I've literally killed the ship already at this point and he hasn't connected to the game. Now imagine if he spawns at the forward position. He could actually be visible right now and could be shot by the enemy team. And there isn't anything he could do about it because obviously you know if, like okay so he connected now. And he's gonna complain in chat or voice chat, I don't remember which one, uh, about how some problems he had. But with these spawns, if you are like an Izuma and you spawn there, you could literally die before you, you know, get into the game. Oh, and we had this problem in the past on Islands of Ice where an Izuma in a bad spawn could actually be shot pretty much from the start of the game. And I just don't like that. They're reintroducing an issue like this, basically. Although, you know, the split spawns that we had in the past weren't the greatest either. Still, I, I think I still preferred those over this one. But the cross, cross spawns were, yeah, those weren't as great. Okay, so I guess we are actually taking the ACAP now. I will go and try to support my team. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to deal with that Yamato. Um... We don't have any of the cap zones, but we are taking the A cap, and I think it's likely that we will be able to take it. Now, this should be a fairly, fairly good position to try to fight that Yamato, and I think actually we're gonna be able to take her out. Well, maybe not with this shot, but she should actually go down very soon, and that would be very helpful. Um, that would actually put us comfortably in the lead, because yep, there, there she goes. To an Izumo no less, so we do have a ship in the game that does have pot the potential to have that bad concealment. Okay, unfortunately our Bismarck also died uh, to their Mogami, and she was even torpedoed. That's actually slightly surprising, because the Bismarck should have Hydro. But I guess, you know, it doesn't have 24-7 uptime. So nobody has kept the seed cap yet, so I guess at this point we are even in terms of the cap zones. But because we've killed one extra cruiser, um, a fun and engaging cruiser kill, well, we are in the lead. And I, I guess I will, I will not try to YOLO a Friedrich, because that usually leads to bad things happening. Mostly because a Friedrich 
can't really be citadeled easily, which means that any battleship fight at close range is probably not in my favor. Now there are planes incoming, so I launch my float plane and I select it for targeting. And I think I just got citadeled. But I guess it makes sense and it's kind of worth it because uh, being able to get out from where I was I think is actually worth all of this. By the way, if you're wondering what these follow alerts are, it's because this match was on, on the stream, so people were following. Although it, it doesn't necessarily mean... Although if people follow, that doesn't necessarily mean it was a match on stream. Because people randomly follow too. At random times even. Okay, oh my god, torpedo. I get... Oh, never mind. It's calculated, of course. Calculated torpedo dodging. Oh, is that Corfer's run aground? Okay, that should be... Mm, I don't know. I mean, it, it shouldn't be difficult to hit, but the Kurfürst has a fairly armored deck and I don't think I'm far enough to uh, get uh, plunging fire. I think I would still need to go further away, so the next target instead is going to be the Friedrich, I think. Especially since she is showing a little bit of broadside too. Okay, so the enemy team only has two DDs left, um, which, which means that... Um, both well actually we don't know where the Kagara is I'm fairly safe from the Shimakas I think because her last known location was at sea but the Kagara might be lurking anywhere around here like around any corner because she was much closer at the time and you know that could essentially lead to the to her trying to hunt us okay there's the Kagara uh, I will definitely try to take a shot although I think I just led too much but we'll see in a moment. Ah, nah, I'm actually quite ha happy with that. Two shell heads from nine. On a DD at 10 kilometers, I'll take that. I mean, that's that's more than 10% of the Kagero's health. And I mean, the friendly Kagero is also dealing damage, and so is the cruiser. And I, I guess... You know, I really would have liked to do a follow-up shot on the Kagero, but she disappeared. Then she reappeared, but I had already turned my guns, and unfortunately, the Yamato's guns do not traverse quickly, so I didn't want to keep trying. Okay, that Friedrich is also fairly low now. Um, maybe we can take out that Mogami. I guess it depends on what, where the Mogami turns. If she turns towards the B-cap, then... Okay, she seems to be coming towards the B-cap. This should mean that we should be able to deal with... Uh, the Smogami, although maybe maybe she'll like do some matrix dodging and I won't be able to hit her at all. But I'll hope for the best. Let, let's just hope that um, the same thing happens that happened to the Zhao, obviously, because that would be the best one. Okay, fine. I'll take two penetrations. Oh, and the carrier seems to be actually following up. That's actually a really good idea. If you are a carrier and there is like an enemy Mogami, or there is a Mogami on the enemy team, or like an Atago, those are incredibly good targets for you. While they might have defensive fire, um, which I would recommend dodging, their anti-air out damage output is pretty low. And there she goes. Of course, the last hit is a citadel. That's the law in World of Warships. Um, it, it's like a law of physics. With some exceptions, obviously. You know, you can't citadel Habarovsk and all that stuff. Although it seems like the Habarovs does have an armor scheme that um, should be, or a citadel protection of some kind. So that be kept is incredibly tempting, but I do have to remember that they still have two destroyers, and they are both torpedo destroyers, so if I actually go in there, I am simply being torpedo bait, which is probably a bad idea. So, um, basically I'm showing what the what's 32 millimeters on this ship um, you can uh, you can literally penetrate this with IFHE on 155 millimeter caliber uh, HE shells and you can also uh, overmatch this with Yamato guns but any other type of um, tier 10 battleship or lower gun or shell will bounce off that armor because or you know if they are at a sufficient angle because they cannot overmatch it. So, I just realized that I'm actually sailing towards the sea cap. 
And there are quite many enemies there. Now hopefully we'll be able to take out that Kurfer soon. I say we, I mean us as a team. Us as a team. And uh, that they will then come and help me to try to fight on the sea cap. Friedrich is next, obviously. Uh, they still have the two DDs, so I still have to be careful of that. Uh, planes are incoming, so obviously launched my float plane and selected for second. Sorry, anti-air targeting. I'm not gonna repair this. Uh, okay, I saw a DD right there, so I'm gonna start turning towards her. And I'm also gonna fire my guns on the Friedrich while I do so. I don't want to damage on because, see, those torpedoes, that's what I, what I want to save my damage control party for. You know, in case they set me or flood me. No. Okay, I actually, I actually made a pretty big mistake here. You see, I just used Damacon immediately once the torpedo hit. But there was no need because I didn't actually get flooded. I only had the fires, so that was actually a bit of a waste. On the other hand, what's the chance that I'm going to be set, fire, set on fire again immediately or, you know, get flooded? I don't think that's as high. Now, I do think the, enemy, the friendly carrier made, carrier made a bit of a mistake. She could have kept spotting the Shimakas and I could have maybe taken a few more hits on her. However, she seemed to pull her fighters back, so we lost all the spotting. So we've lost four ships, they have lost six, so we are quite comfortably in the lead. And there is a Dimitri Donskoy there, not that far, and she... Excellent. Yeah, she excellented. Okay, torpedo bombers incoming, I think. Maybe not for me though, it might be for the Iowa. Regardless, uh, us two together should have enough uh, anti-air to be able to at least ward off these tier 8 carrier planes. Oh, and we see the Lexington too. Excellent. Come on. Hopefully that will go th through the deck and um, deal significant damage. That's our second shot on the Lexington this game. And did you just see that? Uh, those torpedo bombers were all shot down pretty much purely by the Iowa before the torpedo bombers could even drop torpedoes into the water and you know I, I just said not long ago that they had lost four six ships we had lost four right well at this point they have lost nine ships now so it's pretty much just wrapping it up um, although I do have to still be careful of the fact that they have a Shimakaza and the Kagera Okay, there are the Shimakas the torpedoes. That's only one launcher of, of torpedoes though. Okay, there's a second one. Probably a third one too, but you can never be quite sure of this. So I have to try to at least consider that. Now I expect one of the DDs, well, sorry, I say one, I mean the Shimakas to be inside the sea cap or somewhere very near it. Because that's one of the best uh, positions for a DD to try to ambush a battleship. Especially since they get vision from the planes. However, because the Shimakas have fired at least two launchers of her torpedoes, I'm fairly confident in my ability to be able to fight her. Which is why I'm essentially gonna take this fight. Okay, there is the Shimakaze. Um, secondary targeting obviously for secondaries and uh, also also launched my float plane maybe, maybe it'll spot some incoming torpedoes or the incoming DD or something like that because that's obviously useful now I do wonder if the Shimakas already has torpedoes I think that's a no right so she probably can't really do a very good ambush although she might you know torpedoes take quite some time to travel so it's very important for me to try to kill her as quickly as possible. She has 6,000 HP and I will try to pick her up. Well, there it is. Well, she had 5,300 and something HP and four over penetrations were simply enough to take her out. Excellent. So now there's only the Kagara plus the Lexington left. Uh, the Lexington is dropping on me, but I have Damekon available, so this is pretty much a non-issue. I'll take like one torpedo here, I think. And wow, it did 4056 damage. Not exactly something I'm very worried about. And the Lexington seems to be coming around the island now, so I might even get a shot on the Lexington. Oh yeah, I, ha I already have a crack in though, so 
this isn't as important. Now, I honestly think what the... Oh, wow. Okay, 42,000 damage. Just a devastating strike to follow up a, a Kraken. Okay, that was quite lucky. And, you know, imagine if, uh, if I had had this kind of a shot at the start of the game. The Lexington would have instantly been dead. Why? Because she just spawned way too close to the uh, enemy team. You know, it, it's the problem isn't there that uh, you know we might that something like a Yamato might be able to fire at her. The problem is that um, she might get spotted easily, and then most battleships at those tiers might be able to take a shot because at the distance I was at at the start from the Lexington. And Iowa, North Carolina, I believe even, and Izumo, uh, a Yamato, would all be able to take shots at her. Anyways, at this point, the game's pretty much over, so I'll just skip. There's the game. So I got the first blood crack and unleashed and two devastating strikes, and I killed half the enemy team. Six ships sunk, four citadel hits, and I even shot down a bunch of planes. I only did 185,000 damage. I say only because I did sink half their team. But still, the Yamato is pretty much as fun as ever. I I guess the only real issue she has is with um, concealment from time to time. But that ship is still as fun as she has ever been, I think. Oh wow, 3,190 base experience. That's actually quite surprising. I suppose dealing significant damage to cruisers and destroyers was important enough. And I think the friendly carrier played really well. Uh, I mean, he definitely outplayed the Lexington, so... Compliments where compliments are due, I think. I didn't do all that much tanking this game, though. And 300,000 profit. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, then like it, and I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Duncan, and I hope I see you guys next time.